Wow, what a what a horrible situation. The person on the back of this truck has got to be terrified. And anyone watching this right now, you probably got a, um, a little bit of a pit in your stomach as you see this. And you can see that um, people on the overpass were stopped there as well as they see um, a person hanging on to the back of this semi. They've got, um, you can see, um, it looked like some of the exits there were blocked off as well as police try to really contain this situation on 75. And it looks like, uh, I thought that that was correct. My producer tells me I'm right. What I'm seeing there is... Um, the front tires, um, not sure if these are spike strips that made this happen or not. There's a couple more spike strips. That is what we're seeing. They've got this thing slowing down, which is exactly what they want. Mike, are you there with me now? I'm here with you, Rochelle. I see you, Major. You see the number of spike strips now that the front tire is out on the left-hand side. It's hard to see if uh, the uh, front right tire is out on this semi-trailer, but uh, again, a very, very dangerous situation with the driver on the back of the truck. Now, one of the things they're gonna try to do, I always guarantee you, and uh, I know Georgia's control inside their vehicle, they have uh, citizens band radios, which a lot of truckers have, as you know, okay. and they're probably gonna try to contact him via CB radio, because that's probably the only way that they can communicate with this guy while he's rolling down I-75. And Mike, explain this area. Do you, do, we saw we were at a mile marker 198, the, the High Falls Road area. Do you have an idea where this is in, in Georgia uh, off of I-75? Do you know the area? But, yeah, it's just in fact, I was looking for my map today. <laughs> I was looking for my map here. It's not too far from Griffin where it started. So, you know, you, it's a, uh, I'll try to get you an exact location as soon as I can get my find my map here. Well, actually, I got Chuck Roberts um, yelling over to me that it's about 20 miles north of uh, Macon. And, Mike, do you see what we're seeing now? This yep. truck is going to have to give in at any, right. any moment now. Yeah, that's the battery right there. You just see the battery came off the top there because of the uh, strip there. And, uh, you know, hopefully none of it. You see the driver, he's got his shirt pulled up over his face to, to make sure none of the pieces of rubber of those, because, uh, you know, those are steel belted tires come up and could injure the driver. So, you know, he's hanging on for dear life, and uh, you've got this guy now who's, uh, you know, hijacked his truck. And, Mike, talk about the tanks on the side of this um on the side of the semi as well. Yeah, those are uh, those are fuel tanks on on either side, and uh, you know it's very very difficult. We see uh, very seldom see a, a semi semi you know a semi hijacked Rochelle, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult you know for law enforcement like they usually can do with a car. We've seen it many many times on HLN where they'll go ahead and uh, use the pit maneuver, but it's very very difficult. But this driver is not going to go too much further. On the uh, on on the rims of this, and it you know what one of my concerns is that the rear tires also deflate. Then he'll be dragging that, uh, be very very close to dragging that that uh, the fuel you know, the fuel tanks on the ground. Right, and, uh, that's exactly that, that's what I'm picturing, Mike. Right now, yeah, worst case scenario, exactly. is something like that. Exactly. So, I mean, if we saw him lay out the spike strips because uh, he wasn't going that fast when they were able to get in front of him. The mm -hmm. uh, you've got Georgia State Patrol and uh, the local law enforcement. Uh, where they were able to uh, basically radio ahead to uh, maybe four sites to the other off to other departments heading down towards Macon. What's going on? This is a semi, and there is a man on the back who's been on the phone. And the cops are chasing this thing. They put the spike strips out. The front left tire is completely gone. There's just a wheel there. And this thing is I don't know which interstate. Oh, I-75 in Spalding County, actually outside of Atlanta. So this is this is what we've been watching in here while they're talking about Notre Dame. This is this is incredible. <laughs> I don't know many of the details here, but I can tell you that this semi truck has been chased by cops. He's gone through a pile of cops. He, there was a roadblock set up. They spike stripped the thing and blew the tire out, and he just keeps going. It's the Energizer Bunny of car chases and 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 a man on the back. Now he's been on the phone. And he keeps throwing things. And this this speed, this very slow speed is a new thing. This only began only began when he lost the tire. I mean, he slowed down only because he has to. And and we have to watch this. Now in a minute, we're going to get to the bombshell developments at, with Arlen Specter saying in essence, the right wing of the Republican Party has hijacked the thing. He said the right wing is trying to purify his word, the Republican Party. He couldn't win as a Republican in the state of Pennsylvania because the right wing, as he put it, hijacked the party and wasn't going to let him win. And then they can only imagine the fear that uh, he is feeling at this point. Again, for those of you familiar, if you've ever been south of Atlanta, you know where I-75 and I-85 kind of uh, turn into a... The guy who owned the, the car, the, the vehicle, was in it 
he was carjacked. Now he's on the back of it while the person who stole it is in a high speed chase with police. Are you kidding me? Now both of the front tires have either fallen off or been worn off. We believe that he hit spike strips just a little while ago, and that's how it all went down. Uh, what in the world this guy's going to do? I mean, it is some sort of miracle that this man is still hanging on. When I say they were going fast, I mean it. The hijacking of the truck happened on I-75 through Fulton. We have Jonathan Hunt who's watching this as well. Jonathan, I've been watching and, and quite frankly, enjoying car chases for many, many years. We've seen truck chases that end up, you know, hitting the side of a mountain. We've, we've seen it all, I thought. Now, now we are, this has to be the last chapter. Yeah, what else can happen? Look at that tire on the back there. See that thing? It's just about to roll right off there. And there is the owner of the truck. Yeah, well, you're wondering why he hasn't at some point tried to jump off. I assume the, tra the tractor trailer just hasn't slowed down enough for him to be able to do that. But he apparently made quite an effort this to jump This tractor trailer's been back. flying. And now it's that. Now, look, there goes another wheel. I mean, this tractor trailer, you know, if it wrecks, look at the fuel tanks on the side of that thing. All he's got to do, there it goes, whoop de doo All he's got to do is just take one wrong turn, and that guy could get tossed off that thing. Yeah, you would think as well, the way those tires are wearing through right now, Shep, that this cannot go on very much longer. Uh, I mean, he's keeping his speed up right now, but there's, there's a, a limit to how long he can go at that speed. You know, on it those looks rims. like, Jonathan, the front fender's on the ground. Yeah, really, it does. I mean, it, you would think it has to come to a, a close very soon, and that guy on the back is going to be very grateful when it does, you, you would you, imagine. But you know, I, I, I have information from, from our local station, Fox 5 in Atlanta, and let me tell you something, they're good. It's a very good station with an excellent reputation, and I'm sure they're right. But it's strange to me that the man who owns the truck is hiding his face from the helicopters and the police. I mean, I, I, he, the man sitting on the back is hiding his face. Uh, it may, that may be because stuff's coming up at him off the road, and there's probably a very bad smell that Jessica mentions from the, from the burning tires and all the rest. So it's just a little weird. You know, John? Yeah, there certainly is a little, but there are so many weird things about this particular chase, as you said at the top, Shep. I mean, where, what he is doing there, why he jumped on the back, how he thought he could get his truck back from the guy who is now driving it. Uh, I mean, it's all a bit of a mystery right now, and we clearly don't know uh, any of the details as to how this began, other than it, according to the cops and according to Fox 5 down there, it is it was a carjacking, and the guy is the owner, and he jumped on the back. Wait, think of the predicament that the police are in. They'd like to stop this, but they got to worry about the man who is clearly, if all of our information is correct, an absolutely innocent victim, and his life is in the balance on the back of this truck. I mean, the cops are in a horrible position. Yeah, very difficult for them. I mean, you, they clearly, it seems, use spike strips because of the way those tires have ripped apart. Uh, so they have taken some Drop action, the banner, please. We need to be able to see that cop car coming up on the left. There we go. Go ahead. He's coming up very close to him there, but clearly with, with a tractor trailer that size, you can't try the pit maneuver, or at you least I would think it would be extremely dangerous. You couldn't do it anyway because you got a man on the back yeah, of the exactly. thing, and, and, a, and apparently an innocent man. So they Let's just, listen to the chopper, John. Uh, maintaining a distance, keeping their vehicles back to be safe as a precaution. We have once in a while, we have seen a police vehicle pull up alongside. This truck is get falling a apart. The cab, but uh, they are being very cautious as they continue to pursue this vehicle southbound here on I-75. That's the chopper reporter for Fox 5 in Atlanta, WAGA, our, our station there. And, you know, we don't see it. They have so many weaving interstates in Atlanta, but you don't see a lot of these things. You know, it's not like Los Angeles where another day, another car chase. Atlanta, that's not how it is. But not only do they have a car chase, they have a semi chase well, with a semi falling apart and a man on the back. That individual on the back of the truck that they are not doing those types of moves, not trying to put down spikes, which could result in a very uh, jerky, fast stop. So they are simply taking the precautionary measure of going at a well, slow pace. Well, if they didn't put down spike strips, how in the world has he lost th three wheels? Truck, That's what I wonder. Clear traffic out ahead Slowing of the down a lot, Chuck. Uh, but most of the chase vehicles have maintained a safe distance behind the truck here. Right now, it looks like the truck is really crawling to almost a stop now, right in the middle of I-75. Almost on a stop now. Now what's going to happen? I mean, the truck can go no more. It, it's 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 falling apart and now the man is on the back still covering his face police are clearly going to be able to surround this thing it looks like he's about out of go juice you know so what now is this guy armed who carjacked this poor truck owner i mean you just don't know does truck owner jump indeed he does oh my goodness good grief are you kidding me now what now the cops i guess can do whatever they want 
It does indeed. Either it, Deidre, one thing we did Within, not know, you know is how much fuel was on board this vehicle at the time that this chase began. It is a possibility that the vehicle is running out of gas or something, that all that uh, mileage on those rims instead of tires has really just brought this vehicle to Well, I tell you, the fall. judges in our he studio have given him an 8.9 for that jump. That was on the, the, the Olympic scale. The he got an 8.9 for the jump. And uh, he did get up and walk away after he jumped off the truck, so hopefully he will be okay. But again, these... Uh, he looked okay. I mean, he walked off pretty good. That was an impressive jump and flop. I mean, they are still giving... Remember the Fosby flop? The space and then, was it Fosby? Uh, about Fosberg. Safety, Fosberg officers, flop. But also those he was a, he was a you see, pole vaulter. On the northbound side, there are still cars coming northbound, so they want to take every precaution to make sure that no one is in harm's way as this individual continues. Man, you wonder chase. what this guy's going to be charged with, don't you? I mean, think of it. And look at the look at the what's leaving in the road there. Clearly, the, the tires, the wheels on this thing are tearing the road up. They're going to have to do major road repair. You would think. I mean, look at it. Now he is done. It appears this truck has just succumbed. It's like, well, I can't do it anymore. Sir, get out of me and give me back to the man who used to again, treat me properly. Of the possibility of shots fired probably led to them taking every single precaution Shots possible. fired. See, I didn't and, know that. Uh, the vehicle has now come to a complete stop here on the interstate. And well, that changes as things, doesn't it? Approach, you will see them take, continue to take that very cautious stance. See there? See the These cross coming up from behind? And uh, prepared to encounter this vehicle and possibly the driver inside wow. that they think could be I hope be this doesn't end horribly. Oof. Well, uh, clearly, shots fired. There's the possibility of shots fired, according to the chopper reporter. The, apparently, if you're just tuning in, this somebody carjacked a man who just, from this truck, the man just jumped off the back of the truck. The wheels have fallen off the truck. The truck has now just won't go anymore. It would appear that the police from two different Indeed, agencies, just in different, he does different clothing. Fine with their demands right now. We did Hello, just see a, knocking on the window. Please, please come out. During this entire chase, we have lots of guns of on you. Police helicopters. Now is the time well, to give it up. Patrol vehicle, uh, helicopter. And man, y'all just put stuff on the screen. Gets in the way. Now they're the the breaking the window. The man out of the car and so, or out of the cab of the vehicle. And Let's put it somewhere else. Not complied with those demands. Right now they are again our thanks to Fox like 5 in Atlanta we've taken the, the courtesy to them the down because we want you to be able to see this but the Fox driver. 5 in Atlanta big love thank you this is something else man has carjacked truck with man in back now they're having to break the windows to get him out of the truck 10 people with guns on you and then and you make them break the windows are you kidding me I can't wait to find out what this man is on what drugs have, have taken him over what demons have possessed him and Deidre, you can see there 15 cops around it weapons drawn one officer, sir it's over officer, get out we have other news right and if you I knew everybody wants to see the end of this and so do I so we will Luck, luckily we have 24 hours of the news day but right after this astounding developments in Washington Arlen Specter has accused the right wing of the Republican Party of hijacking the party, saying, I cannot win in the state of Pennsylvania. Republicans are not winning across the nation because the right wing tried to, quote, purify the Republican Party. Now, oh, here we go. We'll get to all that in a minute, but you don't want to miss it. And the, the, the swine flu is spreading like wildfire now. Hundreds of New York City school children. Hundreds of school children have it. And here this guy is. Well, you know, I have a lot of police officer friends who tell me that st there's a strength that comes with certain drugs, and that guy just had a half dozen cops on his back, and they had a hard time bringing him down. Man alive. I bet he has a very unhappy next few hours. Just a guess. And we also watched, as we mentioned a few moments ago, there was that man that we believe to have been the owner of the truck actually riding along on the back in a precarious position. We saw him jump off the vehicle as the vehicle slowed about a quarter mile back. And we do believe that that individual is in police custody right now as well. They'll simply want to uh, get as much information they can from him. But this uh, chase now ending here with the truck stopping and the troopers getting that individual finally to come out of that vehicle. But he did resist to the very end here. Well, there you have it. He certainly did resist. So you know how it goes. As the story is developing, you get all kinds of different stories. But we think we have it pretty right. All of our folks down in Atlanta and here in New York and across the country will be checking on this, and we'll give you all the details. But as I mentioned, there are two enormous stories that will affect the entire nation. Uh, look at this. This I guess it's our belief that this is the victim of the carjacking. 
Now they're doing a little treatment on him. Man, can you imagine what this man has been through? Not only did some huge guy come steal his truck, but he was left, oh, is that, a, is that an injured police officer? Oh my. And now he's injured a police officer? It's gonna be a very bad rest of life. But we got two enormous stories I gotta get to. There you go, Atlanta. Don't miss the next 10 minutes. And you try to assist him on the ground, but as you can see, he was uh, he was not having any of that, and that's why the officers uh, had to use the force necessary to to uh, to maintain that arrest. Well, sheriff, good job. You guys coordinated all this very well. It looks like um, I, I it's just a textbook case, isn't it? Well, you know, I, we can't take credit for it. It's all the team teamwork. Absolutely, out there. it is. Yes, sir. Absolutely, it is. Um, uh, the state patrol was part of this. At what point? The state patrol units joined us uh, once we had gone through Henry County. Henry County caught up to our units uh, probably about uh, maybe two or three minutes into Henry County. Then we got onto I-75 from Henry County, and at that point, Henry County and Georgia State Patrol units took lead. And are you, at this point, is this north of Forsyth? Where are we on I-75? Um, well, Roughly. I, yeah, I'm not sure about where they've stopped at now, but, okay. but when uh, Henry County is north of, or, of Forsyth. And were you communicating with him by CB radio or any other means? No, we had no communication. None? With nothing at all? None. Hmm. Okay, and you didn't know whether he was armed? No, we didn't. Uh, other than, like I said, some unconfirmed reports uh, of objects being seen inside the cab and uh, that sort of thing. Okay, well, good job. And, Sheriff, I can't thank you enough. Um, and once more, here is the driver uh, of the of the tractor jumping off and uh, sustaining what may be some injuries, but he's able to get up and walk away. Uh, what a ride for him. Uh, the distance covered, Sheriff, if you're still with me, we're talking, what, 40 miles maybe from start to finish at oh, least, right? Oh, at least. I mean, it was probably about 20 miles coming from Fulton County through Clayton County because he was all on surface streets and then probably at least a, another 10 to 15 maybe wow actually i'm thinking about it probably about 30 miles on the interstate and and how far ahead did you clear the, the roadway uh, well because of the speeds i mean it was very difficult we tried to stay at least uh at least about a half mile in front of them all right sheriff thank you so much good job wally zines as always a pleasure thank you sir and Mike Brooks as well. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, Chuck. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, a semi-tractor after a high-speed, slow-speed chase, I should say, uh, has been brought to a halt, and the suspect has been arrested, as you can see. A brave leap here for the truck driver who survived his truck being stolen and a wild ride with the suspected thief. Look at that. Taking police on a high-speed chase, all the while the truck driver, the original truck driver, clinging to the back. Here you're seeing the tape from what happened just moments ago. Let's switch now to the live look where investigators are at the scene looking at this big rig. They've pulled the suspected truck jacker out of the cab. They tackled him on the ground, handcuffed him, and led him away. This started in Fulton County, Georgia, near Atlanta, and ended in Monroe County on I-75. Uh, and it does look like the investigation continues, and perhaps they're not letting traffic in. Traffic may be a bit of an issue. This